Cool. All right, let's move on. Uh, I want to ask a little bit about uh, how how videos get suggested. How how a video ends up in front of myself or somebody else. Obviously, this is something that over the course of time that I've been doing this has changed significantly. Um, when I started out, discovery was a little bit more work. You were really having to cultivate this uh, uh, list of subscriptions and then relying on this, your subscription feed. Now it's uh, much more suggestion based. And so uh, people end up encountering content that they didn't necessarily have to seek out. What are the key characteristics of um, a piece of content now that ends up being suggested far and wide? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a super interesting question, and and it's not going to be surprising to you that there's not a there's certainly not a simple answer to it. Um, and in fact, the reason why I think there's not a really simple answer to it is sort of where some of the magic of YouTube comes from in the first place, which is there is such a breadth and diversity and depth of content, uh, regardless of your interest as a viewer. Uh, whether that's a short-term interest, long-term interest, wherever you are in the world, uh, chances are there's you know something that is uh, of interest to you on YouTube, and and because of that sort of kind of extremely wide range, um, there is no sort of one size fits all or silver bullet in terms of like what makes sort of you know uh, a, a video particularly prone to be recommended. And in a fundamental sense, that's because the way to actually deliver to our viewers what they're looking for is based on personalization. And so personalization is all about the individual preferences of a particular viewer. What you're going to see in your home feed or what's recommended to you after you're done watching a video uh, is going to be different than mine and, um, you know, different than sort of the next person. And that is, in an essence, sort of, you know, the magic of YouTube. And so we when we make those recommendations, when our um, when our algorithms learn what should get recommended to you, lots and lots of signals go into it. So you know, obviously, you know what what videos um, a user clicked on, but you know, more importantly, what did they watch? Things like watch time. Um, we talked about likes and dislikes, um, uh, and other a whole set of other signals will go into those recommendations. But it's fundamentally about um, what type of content, what type of videos you like watching uh, on our platform, and our recommendation algorithms learn from that. That's why you know your home feed as a new user um, continues to evolve and gets better and better and more and more honed over time. And that's the experience of you know the vast majority of our users all over the world. That doesn't mean that users don't take into uh, um, don't take it into their own hands when they want to actually also have a curated experience, and that's what the that's what the subs tab is all about, as you know, right? You subscribe to your favorite channels, your favorite creators, um, you know, uh, you, so that you. Um, always have access to their videos in a very specific spot in the YouTube app. Uh, you can set it up in a particular way that you like. You can um, uh, set up notifications around those videos in a particular way because that's obviously also a big driver of discovery of content. And then, of course, kind of the tried and tested sort of way that's always existed since the early days is just search, right? Just being able to search for uh, videos as well. Um, so it's really kind of, you know, what people do with some with search and then uh, and then of course recommendations play a really big part um, and it's all of those signals that go into it